Hey everyone, it's Deb. I'm going to teach you how to customize your expense tracker today. I had a lot of requests for these specific tutorials over the last few days, so I'll be covering these six things. How to change the name of the category, changing the color of a category, adding a category, adding income to the expense tracker form, updating the year, and changing the country and currency. So timestamps will be below. Let's get started. So what you're gonna do is open your expense tracker. And these are the ones that downloaded straight from my template. So this is what you would have. And open the expense tracker first and like, you know, has all these sample inputs. And changing the name is super simple. All you gotta do is go to the column that you wanna change the name of. So bills, I don't really like bills for example, so I'm gonna change it to rent. And then this will update in the yearly breakdown and it will also update in the categories over here. Then you go to your expense tracker form and you go to the section where it said bills and you change it to rent. And we can do a little test right now. So you can go to preview and if you go to the date and then write the answer down, which is just say, let's say rent again, then the amount, thousand, and then click rent. See, that's already updated. Then press submit. Then if you go back to your expense tracker, then you can see immediately that it's updated and the thousand dollars shows up. So when you go to the expenses where the, all the stuff gets input, you can see that the rent is like not colored. This is how you change it. So you select this column and then you go to format and then go conditional formatting. And as you can see, these, this is how I make everything rainbow um, and really pretty. <laughs> and the you put you put conditions on like a certain area and then anything that fulfills that condition gets colored or like in some sort of way. So for the bills, um, I had it colored like a kind of pale red, but I want to change that to rent. So I click on the one which said bills. I change it to text is exactly rent and then press done. And then as you can see, the rent is colored and then the bills isn't. And then you can just basically like delete that cause that's completely irrelevant now. And that's how you change the name of a category. The next thing I'm gonna teach you is how to change the color of categories. So I'm gonna use the subscriptions one as an example and just say you really hate orange and you wanna change it to a different color. Um, for example, highlight a yellow, then you select this section here and then select your color. And then to change it in these graphs here, you should double click on the graph in this section and then the chart editor will pop up and then you go to customize series. And then as you can see, all of the categories are color coded. So you go to subscriptions and then you change the color. So as you can see, it changes to a yellow. So that's done for that one. And then for this one, double click this section. Then you go to subscriptions and then you change the color here too. I found that if you just double click on like the area, like the graph area, then it will bring you straight to um, changing the color. So you don't have to really search for that tab. You just have to double click on the bar and it'll show up. That's that's sorted for like this page. But then when you go to this page here, it's still like the orange color. So what you would do is select this column and then go format, conditional formatting, and then go to subscriptions and then change the color here too. And you're done. The other thing I want to teach you today is how to add a category. If you have all these categories and you've renamed them and you don't think it's enough, then you can add one really, really easily. So I recommend adding it at the end of um, this column here because what happens is if you add it in the middle, it kind of actually messes up the colors on, on these graphs. So I recommend just putting it at the end. So what you do is you go right click on this column and then go insert to right and it'll make a completely new column, which is blank. The great thing about this is that all you have to do is select this area 
Command-C, copy, and then Command-V, paste. And it copies all the formulas over here and it doesn't mess it up. And let's test it. So, um, so yeah, let's call it something different, like new. And let's make it gray because I've run out of colors. All the formulas have been copied over, which is great. Then what you do is you go back to your expense tracker form, the one that you can edit. Then you add new to the categories and then go to preview and let's insert something in here. New expense. Let's do $60 and then select new, then press submit. And then when you go back here, as you can see, $60 has inserted itself into new, which is awesome. And then if you were to go back to expenses, then you can see that here, but it's not color coded. So what we're going to do is go back into conditional formatting, select this column, go to format, conditional formatting, and then add another rule. So it's going to apply to the range, this whole column. And then you can go format cells if text is exactly new. And then change it to gray and then press done and it'll color code it. So once you have this set up with the color coded gray, then you can go back into monthly expenses. And as you can see, these haven't like the new expenses haven't applied to the graphs yet. So what we're going to do is add them. So double click on this and then go to setup and then take a look at the data range. So right now it says A1 to M13 and M13 is the kind of the column where the old categories used to sit. But because you added a new column, it should be up to M13. So just add N and then when you go to scroll down to series, you can add series because it only goes up to GIFs. So as you can see here, it hasn't added the new category in here yet because it hasn't been registered as a series. So you go add series and add new. And then as you can see, it's added there. And there's like a little bit there. And then for this one, double click on this, go to setup and then go change. So as you can see, it says B1 to M1, B15 to M15. So because um, the range was M and now it's N, so just replace both M's with N's and then that should be sorted. And you don't have to add any like anything else after this because it automatically adds um, the $60 into here. And that's how you add a category. So the next thing I'm going to teach you is how to import your income into the expense tracker form. This is a small update I've added to the current expense tracker. So if you're watching this right now, if you were to re-download the expense tracker, then it will have this update in it. If you go into your expense form and you wanted to insert your income, you can actually do that now. So let's say income, your amount. Okay, let's just say I got paid 1K for a job. And then if you scroll to the bottom, then it says income and you submit. And what happens is if you go to expenses, technically it's not an expense, but it's okay. Um, you can see that it's registered here. And what's really great about this is that it gets transferred over to here and it adds up for you. So um, thank you to everyone who asked that question and even made suggestions. Um, that actually is incredibly smart and I should have had that in the beginning of the expense tracker. But now that it's in there, um, I'm going to change it to my personal one and it's going to be so much easier for me to keep track of all my income. If you wanted to do previous income, then we can submit more. So if you're like a freelancer and you wanted to just say put it for July, just say I got a job and then make got pay 2k and then put into income again, press submit. And if you go back, as you can see, 2K shows up in here and it all adds up to there. And then it does like the minus 
um, and you can see how many gross savings you got. So that's in the latest update. If you haven't put any of your expenses in, then just re-download it and like redo it. Um, otherwise, I'm going to show you how to add the income category into your current expense tracker and then your current expense tracker form. So this is what the previous expense tracker looked like, where you had to manually like put in your put in your income. So this is how you kind of fix it so it can be put through your expense tracker form. So what you do is you copy the data and the formulas from a column, like any column. Um, go Command C and then go Command B. So if you go over these, you can see that it has all these formulas in there. So once that's pasted in, what you do is you go back to the expense tracker form, scroll to the bottom and then add income as a category. And then go to preview and then let's test it. Let's go income. Let's do 3000. And then go to income and select that, then press submit and then you can submit another response as well. So let's do the previous month. So income 4,000 income again. And then as you can see, it immediately shows up, which is awesome. <laughs> but the thing is it shows up red because it's greater like in this section, this was like supposed to be the line for the budget. And for the other categories, if it goes over like the budget, then it turns red. So what you have to do to fix this is you go select all of this and then go format and go conditional format. And then see the custom formula covers all of this here as well. So it covers these sections. So what you do is because this is column P and you don't want the conditional formatting to be on the P column, just delete it and then you press done and it should solve that. Then you can go back to expenses and as you can see here, these don't have colors on them and we would like to have colors on them. So you select this column, go to format, go to conditional formatting and then add another rule and format cells if text is exactly income then select the orange, then press done. And that should be all sweet. And the great thing now is that you can just put everything through the expense tracker form and not manually through the expense tracker. Another question I had a lot was, what do you do after the year is over? And I usually make a completely new tracker for the year. Just because I don't want all of my expenses all in one, I'd rather have them kind of spaced out and not like for the sheet to get too heavy. Um, so the way to do that is I always have a template on hand. That's why I had a template to share with you guys. Um, so I recommend that you download a fresh, a completely clean template that you have sitting in your drive. And then every year you make a copy of that tracker and then customize it for the year. And the way you customize it is so the expenses are red and they get put into like this whole table and data is that you have to go into this A column here where the month is. And when you look at January, February, March, you think that it just says January, February, March, but actually it is, it holds a date. So it says first of the first 2020. So for example, if I were to go into my expense form and then go to 2021, like let's do January and then go for the first and go happy new year and you know let's put $70 and then go into let's just do rent and press submit it doesn't show up because it doesn't make sense that it shows up because the date here is for the year 2020 but if I were to go 2021 then it shows up. So what you have to do is you have to actually go in at the beginning of every year, go into your expense tracker and change the year of all of this. 
So for example, if you were to look at like this August and it has all of these like $10 expenses in it, this is for August 2020. So if I were to change it to August 2021, these disappear because those expenses are for 2020 and not 2021. So at the beginning of the year, you should go in and just edit these all to be 2021 or whatever year you're watching this in. The next thing I'm going to teach you is how to change the currency. So what you're going to do is you're going to do two things. First, you're going to go to the file and then go to spreadsheet settings. And my settings are set to Australia. So then I go to just say United Kingdom because I have pounds. Select United Kingdom, then press save settings. And that should update. And then what you do is, this is still in dollars, um, so what you do is you select the formats which have the dollar signs in it and then you go to format, number, then go to press accounting and then it'll change it all to pounds. And it'll also change it in here as well, which is awesome. That's it. I hope that helped.